Several organizations are trying to track down service members and their families before it's too late. The family of News 3's Michelle Medeiros was one of them. They recently traveled to France to honor her great uncle who made the ultimate sacrifice. A search is underway in these rolling hills of northwest France. My family and I are hunting for a connection. But long ago, something very different took place on this French farmland. On August 9, 1944, a World War II B-26 bomber named Stubborn Helen crashed while carrying six U.S. airmen, including my great uncle, Vincent Serio. Seventy years later, my family is digging up our history. It brought uh, the realization that I lost a brother. My uncle Sam clings to the scraps of rusted metal found at his brother's final resting place in the memory of his brother Vincent saying goodbye for the last time. I was a youngster and I didn't know him well enough to really miss him all that much until this realization of just what he did and who he was. And the crash site is on the outskirts of St. Cyr La Rogier. Here we met some of the townspeople who saw the plane go down. Giselle Vajdram was but a young girl, witnessed the crash. So he went in the trees. Giselle went on to tell me it was a fiery crash and munitions were exploding in the tail of the plane. Neighbors rushed to rescue the Americans while avoiding German troops. Jean Bachelier, now 101, remembers pulling four survivors and two bodies from that plane. Their airplane was destroyed. I hid them in my house. Bachelier was a member of the French resistance. Through his translator, he tells me he knew the dangers of helping the GIs. We learned that um, some other people who'd hidden Americans were condemned to death. They were shot. Despite the language barrier, it's not hard to understand the gratitude my family has for this man. God bless, what a treasure. Uh, que vous soyez béni, c'est un trésor. We ought to bring him back as a statue to America. <laughs> More than 4,000 miles away from home, strangers, cared for these American boys as their own, even in death. With reverence, a carpenter and his son built my uncle's coffin by hand. Andre Marie was only 20 at the time, just one year younger than my uncle Vincent. They were very, very young. I, I remember exactly how it was. It was so tragic. At that time, it was customary for carpenters to lay the bodies in the coffins. He said to his father afterwards, I, 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 I never want to have to do that again. It was very difficult. A difficult task, but an important one for a family halfway around the world. Something Vincent's mother would have taken solace in. She spent so many nights crying herself to bed for years. And she had seen how grateful the people of France were to her and her sons and allies. She would have got closure. Who would have expected closure to come seven decades later and in another language? They knew that you couldn't understand them, but they kept talking because they knew that what they wanted to say had to be heard whether you understood or not. And we, who couldn't understand them, wanted to hear them, whether we understood them or not, but we knew the feeling was there. There was a sense of duty for our troops and our countries to keep these memories alive. So side by side, the French and the Americans commemorated the lives lost and the freedom gained. In St. Cyr La Vergere, France, Michelle Medeiros, News 3. You can see this story and all of our Veterans Day coverage online at WSILTV.com.